Hi, my name is Ken, and this is part one of Let's Code a MUD in C++11. Uh, this is the first video in a new video series I'm putting together uh, for the purpose of talking about uh, C++11, 14, and 17, and talking about matters of C++ code more generally, uh, style, uh, performance, maintainability, and just in general, um, what kind of code I would write in C++ in 2018. And we're going to do that through doing a project together. We're going to uh, write a MUD which is a, a multi-user dungeon, which is a, a kind of game, a text-based game that um, uh, many people uh, log into uh, with a Telnet client or a, uh, a dedicated MUD client. Uh, and it's sort of uh, an open shared world, uh, but all in text. So it's kind of an MMO before there were MMOs. Uh, these kind of games were, were popular in the uh, 80s and 90s. And uh, we're gonna write one together. We're gonna write the server component uh, that people would log into. Um, and through that, hopefully we're going to learn a little bit about C++ programming. Uh, so who this is for, um, if any of that sounded interesting to you, then this is for you. But uh, I'm going to be aiming this at a general technical level of uh, a C++ 98 programmer, of someone who's had some exposure to the basics of C++ and doesn't need a whole lot of uh, syntax handholding. Uh, but I, I am going to go back and revisit and talk about um, even C++ 98 concepts and talk about uh, things that are... Uh, interesting and worth discussing that are unique to the language. Um, so uh, basically any any C-like language or, or object-oriented uh, experience, you should be able to, to pick this up by os osmosis. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining things uh, just from a, a raw syntax background. Um, uh, Content-wise, th this video is going to be sort of 50% coding, 50% um, digressions, uh, talking about things. Um, so Hopefully, uh, you know, I'll label videos appropriately. So if you're more interested in one than the other, you, you can you can skip over. Um, but but I'd like to, by the time we reach the end, sort of uh, have, have had a chance to talk about just about everything in the language. So this is this is maybe going to be a little ambitious, a little long of a, of a video series, but we'll keep it to uh, to about 15 minutes a pop and we'll try to keep it one topic to a video. So, um, you know, follow along as you want. All right. Um, so to be able to follow along, if you want to do this project at home, you're going to need some prerequisites. Uh, you're going to need a compiler that um, speaks the C++ uh, 17 standard or, or 11. Uh, but nowadays, uh, just about everything uh, implements C++ 17. So I'm going to be using GCC, but follow along with uh, whatever makes you happy. I'm going to be using CMake as a build tool. Um, you don't have to use CMake. You can use Visual Studio or your IDE's built-in uh, build whatevers, but I'm, I'm going to be using CMake to make uh, make files, and then those will be invoking the, the compiler. Um, I'm going to be using the Boost ASIO asynchronous input-output library. Uh, that is going to be required. It's available cross-platform. I believe it's mostly a header-only library, so you shouldn't have a, a whole lot of difficulties uh, installing it, getting hold of it, getting it, getting it set up. Um, but that's that's so we don't have to write raw C style uh, socket code directly. You know, instead of uh, sends and receives, we're going to be writing uh, async uh, writes and async read until, uh, and that'll save a lot of uh, boilerplate, a lot of a lot of tedium of having to reinvent socket logic. Uh, though we are still going to be pretty low level in terms of communication, so uh, we're going to be writing a lot of networking code. It's just not going to be uh, that at at that C socket API level. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be writing my code in Emacs. I'm going to be using a raw text editor just to minimize the number of moving parts uh, behind the scenes, just so there's not a whole lot of magic uh, going on. You guys can see um, what's actually happening. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't. Feel free. Uh, use an IDE. I'm not denigrating IDEs uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I just want to keep things uh, transparent for you guys. All right, so uh, let's start taking a look at code. All right. Um, so I, I've got a bare directory here. I just have my CMake list file. Uh, I don't even have any, any code or directory structure yet. So let's take a look at this. Um, feel free to pause it here if you want to copy this down. Um, but it's, it's pretty simple. All I'm doing here is I am um, declaring a project and an executable and setting some source files for that executable. Um, now I, I'm also setting the standard to, to 17. If you're going to use 11, there's a couple modifications uh, that you're gonna have to do over the course of the project. Uh, the big difference is I'm gonna be using standard optional a lot. And if you're using 11, that's not available. So you're gonna have to use something like standard unique pointer or refactor the code a little bit. Um, 
I'm also using uh, compile options dash w return type and dash w reorder. Uh, to me, these are the bare minimum of warnings that you're going to want because these these indicate uh, issues that that could uh, if anything triggered these warnings that that would likely indicate a logic error in your program. So um, I recommend at least using these, but dash w all is uh, always a good idea. So feel free to do that as well. Um, all right, so this would be a good point to just make a, a main file and make a hello world and just verify that you've got everything you need to compile C++ code. Um, so I'm going to do that on my side. I'm going to make a source directory. I'm going to make a main.cpp. And let's see. In a main.cpp, uh, this is what the standard says is, is the very least you have to have in your main file. I'm also going to put in a return zero because it, it returns an int, it ought to return an int. Um, but if you don't, that's technically implied by the standard. Um, I'm also going to put in my hell, hello world here. So let's do cout hello world. And a new line here. All right. And so to compile this, first um, I have to generate my make file. So I have to run CMake for the first time. And then uh, after this, I should be good to go. But I, I do have to do it once. Uh, so let's see, CMake build type equal debug. I'm going to do this so I get my uh, dash G so I can use the debugger if I need to. Uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to show that to you guys. Um, all right. OK, everything worked there. So uh, there ought to be a make file now. And I can run make. OK, and then that's generated my executable. I can run that, and I get hello world. OK, so if you can get to this point, then uh, you're in good shape. Um, because after this, it's it's all pretty much going to be writing code. Um, and, and the CMake list file here even pulled in the boost library. Uh, it didn't pull in boost ASIO, but it pulled in uh, the boost core uh, for linking. So if if you were able to get this far, you, you're you're probably going to be able to use Boost ASIO. So um, let's let's just go ahead and talk about code then. Um, okay. So what what makes this a mud? Uh, well, it's going to be a server, right? We're going to have some kind of server component that's going to respond to connections. Um, so let's do that. Let's say we're going to have some kind of server class. Um, it's going to accept connections. Let's do. Let's pick the port dynamically. Let's say it's going to have port uh, 5000. Um, and in fact, um, you know, as a matter of style, let's not have any magic numbers, um, but let's uh, put that in an anonymous namespace. So we'll call this server port in all caps because it's constant. Um, we can put that down here, server port. So now we have some semantic meaning behind uh, what that is. And then we're going to say server.run. And that'll run forever. It'll service connections. Uh, and then when there's a clean shutdown, uh, we'll want some sort of indication that the program didn't just crash. So we'll say um, program terminated normally. OK. All right. Um, and then before we write this class, we have to figure out uh, where we're going to put it. So I'm going to have some directory structure here. We're going to have a, a component and then a class level. Um, and then also, because I'm going to use a namespace, I'm going to need to import that namespace. So I'm going to say using namespace mud server. OK. All right, let's go write that class then. OK. So I've got to make the directory server. And then let's edit the server.hpp. OK, so we need include guards. OK, then namespace wrapper. So uh, I like to do I like to do a top level namespace for the whole project. And then I like to do a component namespace. Uh, and I like to organize my components by uh, functional area. So some people organize their directory structure by like design pattern um, in terms of put factories in one place and, and adapters in another place and things like that. And I, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. I like to keep the code together that, that relates to the code it's around uh, so that hopefully you can sort of understand the code one directory at a time. You don't, you don't need to sort of keep jumping back and forth. So uh, that's gonna be my component organization. Um, and then let's put a class in here. 
uh, semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. Uh, very easy to forget and very hard to figure out what you did wrong. Um, we're going to have some sort of, uh, let's see, server here. Um, and then we have void run function. Uh, so as you can see, um, I like to start writing my functions in line. Uh, it just it it makes it easier to get all my thoughts down on the page, and also then anything that would in line because it's a very simple function. Uh, we already have it in the right place. As the functions get longer and as they're not going to be inlined by the compiler, then I'll start offloading them to a CPP file. All right. So to, what do we have to do to make this work? Um, well, we said we're using the boost to ASIO library. And the core of that library is the IO service class. So what an IO service is, is it sort of represents our event loop. Uh, this is the thing that's gonna, gonna run forever and service all of our uh, asynchronous requests. Um, so if I do m IO service dot run, uh, then that'll run forever as long as there's asynchronous requests. Uh, the way this will shut down cleanly is um, if there's no more asynchronous tasks waiting, then this will return, and then this will return back to our program, and we'll be able to quit. Um, and so our, our shutdown process is going to be uh, telling all of our async tasks to, to cancel, to stop running. All right. So we're also going to need an acceptor. We're going to need something that's accepting connections. So in this case, that's a, um, a IP TCP acceptor class. Um, oh, yep. And we said we're accepting a, on a port here. And so what the acceptor needs is it needs to know what the IO service is, so where to put its asynchronous tasks. Um, and then it's also going to want an endpoint. So this is an IP TCP endpoint. Uh, and what we need to provide here is not just the port, but also the TCP version we're using. So this is TCP v6. Uh, and uh, ASIO will be smart here. It will give you both v4 and v6 endpoints if all you specify is v6. Uh, and then it'll present it to you as if it's a v6 connection. But if it's a v4 connection, it will uh, map that address into the v6 address space. So you get the maximum compatibility by doing it this way. Um, but uh, if you wanted to accept only v6, there's a flag you could use for that. Uh, and if you want to accept v4, obviously you can do that. But th this, I think, is the way to go um, to, to offer support for both. Um, and then uh, the last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to accept the connection. Um, actually, let's do this. Because um, the act of accepting a connection, what we're actually going to have to do for that is we're going to have to accept one connection at a time. Um, and then once we've accepted the connection, we want to kind of start that process all over again and accept another connection. So uh, we're going to sort of run it recursively like this. It's not actually recursive because this is going to be a, a callback. But um, yeah, we'll run it once and then again and again and again. Um, okay, so um, what goes here? We're going to need some kind of logic for what happens uh, when a connection comes in, some sort of uh, handler for what to do when a connection is accepted. Uh, and that's uh, going to be the topic of our next video. We're going to, we're going to talk about uh, C++11 lambdas um, and how that's different from function pointers and, and polymorphism and other things you might use to accomplish pluggable logic in C++98. Um, but we're going to do that next time. Uh, we're going to call it a day here. Uh, we, we, we got a lot of stuff in. We got our, our skeleton, and we started uh, pulling in Boost ASIO and, uh, and started talking about our, our server logic. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you find the concept for this video series interesting and you come back for more. Um, my name is Ken, and this was uh, Let's Code a Mud in C++11. Uh, thank you for watching.